now is the time to check your cell phones and please turn them off. Our vision statement, all our students achieve success in college, career, and life. And the thought for the day is Ms. Harding. Um, this was a lesson that our very own Beth Hess shared with um, her new teacher academy, and when I read it, it really resonated with me, and even on the hardest of days, so I thought it was a really great reminder. So she said it was an NTA lesson. You are a shiny new apple. You intrigue kids when you go into work with them because you're a teenager, or a new teacher, or a teacher, and you are cool nevertheless. Stay humble. They work, for you. They work hard for you to impress you. Teaching is hard work. If you stayed in class for a couple months, the bad apples will once again start to rot, no matter how cool you are. Those are the ones who need you the most. Polish them and trim away the brown spots. They are still worthy of being part of the pile, of the pie. Learn from the seasoned teachers who return to the orchard every single year and follow their path. Thank you. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Let the record reflect that all board members are present. Now I need to ask for a moment of silence for the family of Lisa Good, a fourth grade teacher at Mary Giella Elementary School. Thank you. I need a motion to approve the, reg the minutes for the regular meeting on February 18th. So moved. Second. Motion by Crumley, second by Altman. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We have no public hearings and no special presentations. So we are uh, at. Yeah, Madam Chairman. Sir. Okay, go ahead. No, uh, just before we get into public comment, I want to make sure the board was aware uh, that I pulled item 9.4 yesterday. Uh, I need more information from staff before I get the board to authorize travel. So that will not be on the agenda today uh, at all for consideration. Thank you. Yeah, I saw that. Thank you. Are there any other green cards? Attorney Alfonso? I've not received any of the cards. Green cards. Are, are oh, the green cards there right there? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. So do we need to say anything? Nope. There's, that there was nobody? We need the record to reflect? Okay. No, okay. Then we are moving on to USEP. Is there anyone from USEP? Hi, Lynn. Thank you. Sorry, I'm here on behalf of Don this morning. He had a slight accident in his home over the weekend, so he's resting there comfortably. But he just wanted to, uh, again, express his gratitude about the way that we've been working in a very collegial manner. So he just wanted you to all know he appreciated that, and our members appreciate it. So thank you. Wish him well for us. I will. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Board member committee reports, Mrs. Harding? Yes, um, I have a couple. Um, okay. I wanted to give you guys a little update on the uh, transition team meeting that's going on with Hudson Elementary, Gulf Highlands, Fox Hollow, um, and Northwest. Um, it was a really, really, really great meeting. I was blown away how awesome it was. Um, Mrs. Hilton did an amazing job at leading it. Um, she went over the purpose and a project update. Then she went around to each table and had um, the parents, the teachers, the administrators like state their concerns that they had. Um, and then they wrote them on a huge chart paper. And then together, they collapsed the ones that were very similar. And then they prioritized them. And then they had an opportunity. We had an opportunity to split into groups to get ideas on how we can create positive cultures during this transition. So every single group had got to put their own ideas down. Um, and they were, we were able to compile those ideas. So I was just wanted to thank uh, Mrs. Hilton again. I was just so thankful for the first meeting. I think it went really well. Um, and I look forward to this month's meeting um, to hear about the supports we're going to be put in place to help our schools um, have opportunity. And I also made a copy of all the meeting notes for you guys so you guys could have thank you. Um, kind of see the different questions and stuff. That, um, or concerns that people have. I also got to attend a career and technical um, career education board meeting. So um, I wanted to first thank Dr. Kim Morris. She's not in here, I don't think. Um, since the day that she was hired, she's really jumped in uh, to make our CT programs the very best. It was evident in our meeting as she invited community stakeholders. We're really, really um, blessed to have her. She, um, I also made a copy of the PowerPoint that we utilized for you guys. Sorry, let's see how it. <laughs> 
Um, we talked about the, the, the vision, the rebranding, how we can connect businesses within the schools, how we can form relationships within our communities, um, how we can make students excited to join our programs. They mentioned something about even having like a CTE signing day like we do for sports. I thought that was a really good idea. Um, we talked about how we can uh, start to get kids excited from starting at pre-K on. Um, and we talked about the education highway, which is in your PowerPoint, um, that it's important for us to remember that this highway has a lot of on and off ramps. Um, we did decide as a group that we want to merge our committee into the EDC Workforce Committee um, because we, just, we believe that it will give us a greater opportunity as well as be more effective. It's going to help us better form relationships and collaborations with our stakeholders so we can teach our students the skills our industry partners want to see. Um, so if you have any questions about that, I'm sure she'd be more than willing to answer some of those. But it was a very successful meeting. And that's it. Thank you. You're welcome. I had no committees meet. None for me. Well, I guess Ms. Harding and I will make up for y'all because um, <laughs> I had a very busy week also. So uh, let me just give you a brief update on the uh, insurance committee. Um, first, I'll tell you that our average monthly claims for 2019 were $5,136,000 a month that were paid on behalf of our employees and families for uh, health insurance benefits. The good news is, is that stable. Uh, where I can tell you being in the industry that most people are in up upward ticks. We are up a little bit, but our health plans are stable currently, and the health committee is doing a tremendous job of uh, continuing to work on efficiencies and uh, doing things to improve service and reduce expenses. One of those things is an expanded uh, prescription access plan that's going to involve uh, separate windows and a uh, pharmacy that will be there where employees will not have to make an appointment in all cases with a health care provider for just maintenance drugs. It is hopefully going to free up and provide more efficiency for our uh, doctors and also uh, provide a quicker service and a broader array of availability at no cost to our employees. So all of that is ongoing. So you may hear some talk about uh, renovations in our facilities where we provide health services. Those are ongoing. Some uh, were built with this in mind and it's going to be relatively painless, but some of them were not. <laughs> and um, it's, they're cramped for space already and it's going to be interesting. But they, they work uh, continuously on improving services and access uh, for that. So also to let you know this has not been announced yet, but uh, there will be a, um, a relationship that we have formed with Moffitt when it comes to cancer care for our employees. Moffitt is by far the, uh, the most frequent provider of services. And so the district and the insurance committee and staff are working uh, with Moffitt to provide a direct connection service that hopefully will speed up access and allow quicker appointments um, and some dedicated specialists to help walk through the process because one of the things that was mentioned by several of the people in the committee is the overwhelming amount of paperwork um, in order to get through there and so um, because of our size and because of the relationship they're uh, going to have a portal that's going to provide some specialists to, to assist our employees and families in getting direct service and stuff for that, so they're working on it. And then uh, last on that part, we uh, have partnered with the uh, Healthy Start Coalition. Uh, I don't know how to delicately say this, but one of the things that came up is that we have a lot of female employees and we have a lot of pregnant employees. And um, so the safe sleep presentation uh, was, they th felt important, and so we're partnering with them in doing that Saturday, April the 18th, here in Land Lakes, and uh, you can get access to that um, and sign up beforehand if you know anybody that's interested in that. And then uh, yesterday, we met with the uh, construction facilities. As you know, there are five projects that we are working on. We have um, contracting firms that have uh, submitted proposals for that. The ones that have met the qualifications, believe it or not, I've been now 13 years doing this, and this was the most. There's 22 firms wow. 
that want to do work at Pasco County, um, and all of them met some pretty strenuous bonding requirements and other stuff to make that grade. And so I think that speaks well for our district. And so we will be going through those and uh, narrowing that list. And then we will go back for another round of interviews. So that work um, on our West Side schools is actively in play. Um, and um, those hopefully will be uh, selected within the next few weeks and brought to you all for a vote. So, so that's it right now. Thank you. Um, I had a student progression plan meeting on the 19th. I want to thank uh, Samantha Devali, <coughs> since she happens to be here. I get to be that person. Um, there was a lot of discussion about retention and placement determinations uh, for eighth grade students who do not meet all promotion requirements. The group is looking for the best way to support the students so they can complete uh, their middle school requirements and also earn high school credit where it's appropriate. Uh, we want to make sure that we are setting the students up for success and providing opportunities. Uh, different schools offer different courses, so it's important that the staffs at the middle high feeder patterns and the educational centers communicate with each other. We also uh, also discussed were proposed middle school off-track prevention and guidelines so that there are best practices in place to support students with consistency across the district. Um, we continued to work in our breakout groups by level. I'm on the high school committee, which is led by Matt McDermott from Wesley Chapel High School, and I'm grateful for the people on this, com on this committee, including Dr. Isles. Uh, we will continue working in our subgroups at our April meeting, and then in June we'll do our final review as a whole group, and then the summary of changes will go to superintendent staff June 8th, and the public workshop will be June 16th. So we're on schedule for what we usually do in June. And that's it for me. So Superintendent Browning? Uh, yes, ma'am, thank you. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, one uh, point of praise uh, since our last meeting, uh, and I know you all know this, but I like bragging about it, is that the um, Cambridge International has uh, designated um, Pasco Middle School, a, a Cambridge Demonstration Center. Uh, they are one of two in the country uh, that have uh, received such designation. Uh, we're extremely proud of them, and uh, Cambridge will use uh, Pasco Middle School as a site where they can bring other schools and school leaders uh, into to see how you can implement the Cambridge program with fidelity. Uh, I just want to give a, a big shout out to Dee Dee Johnson, who's the principal at uh, uh, Pasco Middle School, but also uh, Kim Anderson, uh, the principal at San Antonio Elementary who, School, who was principal at uh, uh, Pasco Middle School, uh, and the entire team and the staff that made that happen. That was not an easy lift, um, and uh, just much thanks uh, goes to uh, those two ladies, their teams, uh, and Pasco Middle School as a whole, and district staff that helped make that happen as, as well. Um, also, uh, this morning, uh, I'm sure you've had a TV on in the last uh, 36 to 72 hours. You've heard about uh, this, uh, this little virus thing that we're having to deal with. Um, and I've asked Ms. Kuhn when she goes to give a report this morning if she'd just bring the board up to date on what precautions uh, that we're taking as a district to minimize the impacts uh, on that our, on our student population. Also, uh, you have on your desk uh, what would become item 15.4, which is an off-agenda item. Uh, this is a very recent hire at Sun Lake High School. Uh, this is a teacher that's been hired to uh, assist or teach in the Aviation Academy. And in order to get the training that uh, he will need uh, timely, uh, the, the travel occurs before the next school board meeting. So I needed to get it on as an off-agenda item, so I'd like for you to do that. And then finally, um, most of you know that Linda Cobb, uh, who's here today, uh, is retiring. Now, she's not retired yet. Uh, although she's not working this week, she happened to be on vacation this week. Um, but I had her come in this morning because I didn't realize that she wasn't at the last school board meeting or I would have called her out then. Uh, she, she, she and her husband here, uh, Frazier, um, they uh, are uh, good, good folks. Um, Linda came to the district uh, in two, uh, 2013. Uh, it's kind of a funny story, and she hates it when I, when I tell it, but uh, the governor was announcing his budget or something down at some middle school in, in Hillsborough County. It's right after I became superintendent. And it was really odd because I'd never known Linda and um, never met her. And as soon as I walked in that cafeteria, like, she's all over me like white on rice. 
I mean, she is like in my face just helping me one, because I think she knew that there was a vacancy in Pasco <laughs> County. Uh, and sure enough, she made an impression. Uh, and uh, I, uh, we hired Linda to come on as the communications director in February of uh, 2013. She's uh, given seven years of service to this district. Uh, and prior to that, she was with the Hillsborough County School District uh, in their communications department. Uh, Linda and I have a, a kind of a symbiotic relationship where uh, we have this had this rule to keep each other in check. And sometimes that worked, sometimes it didn't, uh, particularly when we were both of the same mind, because that was not a good thing when we both thought the same way. Uh, but uh, Linda's a dear friend. Uh, she has served this district well. Uh, I'm gonna miss her. I know this district will miss her. Uh, and uh, we just wanna thank you for all your efforts over the last seven years, over the last 30 plus years, uh, but seven years in this district. And thank you very much. Love you, thank you. Thank you. or retired or whatever you're going to do. So, yeah. Thank you, Linda. We do appreciate you. Uh, that's all I have, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do you want to say anything? You sure? Are you sure? I've said enough for this district. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm sorry. I thought, yeah. Well, all right. That's the first time I've ever heard her say anything. All right. Thank you. That's all I have, Madam Chairman. Mr. Gad. Well, I also want to just comment that I'm uh, really going to miss Linda. She's been a pleasure to work with. She's had a good, easy temperament. Um, and I think she's just done an excellent job. And she's worked hard for the seven years that she's been here. I'm excited that she's retiring and going to have some fun and, and uh, hopefully go on to bigger and better things. Um, but I'm certainly going to miss her. Um, I wanted to just make you aware of one thing. Um, Oh, and the, the date eludes me. It's in early April. Um, but I want to let you know regarding the west side that uh, the superintendent and I, along with several members of the executive team, are uh, meeting with um, folks from all across the county on the west or on the west side of the county, uh, not-for-profits, uh, the federally qualified health center premier, uh, Dan Biles with uh, the county, parks and recreation, transportation folks, and we're going to share with them what our plan is for West Side Schools going forward. Uh, and then we're also going to talk with them about how we can work together uh, rather than in silos to make a difference on the west side of the county. Um, because we can improve our schools, we can remodel them, uh, we can do all kinds of different things in our school, but we need to address some very basic issues at the same time having to do with transportation, workforce development, parks and recreation. So we're going to um, uh, take a stab at trying to get everybody on the same page and working in the same uh, direction. So we'll let you know how that goes. Um, early April, I don't have my calendar in front of me, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll let you know as it approaches. April 9th. April 9th. April 9th. Thank you. Mr. Shibley. Right. Um, just very quickly, I am uh, making the finishing touches on um, NEOLA Update 20.1, so I'm going to be sending that to Dennis. Um, and the folks at Neola to review. My plan is to get that to the board members in a week or two um, so that we can workshop it at that first um, meeting in April. So uh, be on the lookout for um, those being posted on the board docs website. Um, other than that, there is an addendum to item 10.1 um, that has been uploaded into board docs as well. Thank you. Good morning. I have a couple things to share with you this morning. The first is this is National School Breakfast Week. And so I wanted to share with you um, the stories of three schools who have made great changes in their breakfast in the classroom efforts, and just to share some information with you about that. The first one I'd like to highlight is Northwest Elementary. And they went from 51% of average daily attendance eating breakfast to 75 over the course of a year. So a huge shout out to Nicole Reynolds and her team, as well as the FNS team for that. That was one of our biggest um, increases we have seen. And then also wanted to highlight Chasco Middle School. Um, they made a 13% increase. And then also 5A High School and Zephyr Hills High School made some great strides. And uh, Zephyr Hills had an 8% increase and a 7% increase. And that's before really all the targeted efforts went to the high schools because our focus has been mainly on elementary and middle. And so when you think about you know 8% and 7%, that's over 100 more kids eating breakfast each day. And so we're really proud of that. So I'd like to thank those schools administrations as well as the FNS department for making that happen. Really exciting news. 
Um, also wanted to share some information with you, as Mr. Browning said, about staff's plans regarding the coronavirus. And just to give you an overview of that, uh, we have been working for the past week with the departments and key stakeholders, um, Lisa Kern and the school nurses, Mark Fox and the maintenance team, as well as the custodial specialists who are out in schools every day, transportation, food service, and also uh, after school enrichment programs has been a key uh, stakeholder in this as well. Um, we've worked with Mr. Hagerty and Ms. Cobb on um, public homepage the information. If you go on the webpage, you'll see the banner that says School Health, and that's where we have information for the public to go. Uh, Mr. Browning recorded a video that was posted last Wednesday with information. We have links for the uh, Department of Health as well as the CDC, and we'll continue to monitor and update those links. Um, we have been working t um, as of yesterday with a vendor regarding hand sanitizer, and so we'll um, up be updating schools with that that information once we have it. As you might imagine, there are some restrictions on how much you can buy, so we've been working with that as of yesterday. And then also we've been communicating with principals so that they have what has been shared with staff, what's been shared with plant managers, what's been shared with food service managers, and making sure that everything is being um, cleaned and disinfected regularly and that it's being communicated to students and staff to wash their hands as frequently as possible. We're also, we also have some responsibilities drafted, so we have uh, more of a formalized plan um, for each stage of the virus. So I wanted to give you that update. We'll continue to keep you updated on that. And uh, Mr. Hagerty will continue to communicate out to schools and also to parents and students and staff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Swinson, sorry. Ms. Hilton. My turn, how awesome. Um, I just wanted to um, tell you the results of an awesome opportunity we had this weekend. Um, for our students to, to display all of their talents at the Odyssey of the Mind tournament, we had 149 teams attend, 55 earning the right to go to state. That competition is April 11th. Thanks so much for your support of that. We also, of course, got to celebrate the talents of our elementary students at All County Chorus this weekend as well. Um, when we return from spring break that Monday, we'll have our mental health summit. Um, and this is, is going to be a very important event to bring together many community partners around services for our students. And so I wanted to make sure you had that down and knew that we were prioritizing <coughs> that um, event. And hope that you can um, appreciate your support of that. Hope you can join us too. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Exler and Good morning. I'm so sorry. Um, this is what happens when I don't read my notes and orders. We also have uh, Miss Ann Corcoran here for item 9.5 for classical preparatory. Thank you. All right. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to all the school teams and the district support student support program services staff that pulled together our student congress events. The secondary groups met last week and they had some amazing team time and school collaboration. And you probably see the fruits of their labor in the many see something, say something events that are happening this week around the middle schools. And I also wanted to give a public thank you and shout out to Ms. Bodwin yourself, as well as various other district leaders and three sites who hosted Leadership Pasco's Education Day. Uh, last week, thank you for greeting that group. Sanders Memorial had some amazing students show off their STEAM thinking. Land O'Lakes Culinary students did an ever amazing job serving lunch and um, talking about the opportunities the students have there. And Cypress Creek Middle and High showcased their engineering um, and criminal justice programs for the group. And then many of our district directors and leaders jumped on and off the bus at various points to share what's happening across the district. So Chris Williams with planning and Chris Stowe with safety, uh, Mary Gray from after school enrichment programs, Steve Hagerty with communications, and then Samantha Del Valle and Lori Romano um, finished up the day with choice and pathways at PHSC. So it was truly a very collaborative and amazing day. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Poe. Hi, good morning. So I just wanted to share something that kicked off this week at all of our schools, which is the comprehensive needs assessment visits. And so that's really a collaborative effort where we work through um, the department supporting these. We're all there with the school team. And this is the time of year where our schools are fully engaged in this year's work, but they're also already thinking ahead. 
to their plans for next year. So it, it takes a lot of coordination and Ms. Hilton and her team help out a lot in making sure that we can have these site visits take place um, throughout the month of March. So it's exciting to get to visit all of our schools um, in that time frame. Also wanted to just highlight um, all the great things that are going on at our elementary schools. As already noted, our um, great success with Odyssey of the Mind. We also had a recent Living Wax Museum in honor of Black History Month, which took place at Veterans Elementary School last Friday. Um, if you haven't seen it already, you can definitely look on our website um, and the school's website to see that great activity um, honoring those great historians um, for that month of February. And then tonight, um, I did email all of you a great event happening at Sanders Memorial. It is called the Design on Display event. The pre-show begins at 5, gallery walk from 5.30 to 7, um, and they will be highlighting their design and engineering projects um, at that STEAM magnet school. There's also TEDx speeches happening all night, so we look forward to seeing some of you there. Thank you. Dr. Isle? Yeah, I do just want to start by echoing um, the positive words about Linda Cobb. You may not realize it, um, but there are many evenings where um, we have ongoing communication about serious situations that are occurring, and I've always felt um, blessed to have her support and know that she is there and can help with any situation that's occurring. So we, you will be missed. Thank you very much. Um, lots of great things going on at high schools as well. I want to let you know that Vanessa and I were out at 5 a high school beginning of the week. We did conduct formal walkthroughs there. Things are looking good. The campus is quiet. I will tell you the extra security has made a difference, um, so I wanted to share that with you. And then also, you may have seen on the news this morning, River Ridge High School actually has students being able to talk to Drew Morgan, um, one of our astronauts. Um, so that's very exciting. River Ridge has also invited CRIN students over as well as part of that initiative. We also have um, Zephyr Hills High School. Um, building 200 just got done. It looks great. I was able to take a walk through of it. Um, and so it's really exciting to see that community get basically a newer building um, that their students can really grow in. So it's going to be nice for the community. So thank you. Thank you. Dr. Skanga. I was just going to share a story. Like we, we really support experiential learning in our schools. And so I was at Pine View <coughs> Elementary the other day, and they were doing an enactment of Ellis, Ellis Island. And so these are second grade kids all dressed up. They had their passports. They had to go through all the steps to get, hopefully not put in detention, but to get, <laughs> to get a ticket to, to travel. So I met the Moore family, husband and wife and daughter, and they were actually in the train station with a ticket. So they had made, they had gotten all the way through Ellis Island. And the little girl said to me, it's like, I said, well, where are you going? They're like, oh, we're going to Chicago. I said, oh, that sounds nice. She goes, Dr. Skanga, do you think it snows there? <laughs> and I'm like, well, good luck to you and your family. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, but those opportunities to actually, they, they had read a book, they had watched the video, but then to actually live it, um, boy, the, 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 you know, the, the learning that's happening in those opportunities is just incredible. So wanted to share that with you. Thank you. Madam Chairman, I'd like to uh, turn it back over to Ms. Hilton for some uh, presentation on the Fine Arts Month. If uh, we were going to wait for the proclamation, but we do have some students here, so could we have permission yes. possibly to go ahead and do that right now? Yes, please. Thank you so much. I'd like to call up Mr. Tom Biking. This is exciting. Good, Good morning. morning. This is really exciting. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Browning, Mr. Alfonso, our distinguished board members, and a special thank you to Vanessa Hilton for an opportunity to, to speak to you all today. It is officially the Fine Arts in Our Schools Month, according to the state. And I sat out here last month at a board meeting and saw CTE do a wonderful presentation. And I said, boy, when do we get our chance? And this is it. So hopefully you had a chance to enjoy the Mitchell uh, String Ensemble that was out in, in the lobby. I, ha I asked them here because I wanted you to see what can happen in two and a half years when we add a program. So that is, that is the result of that. So hopefully you enjoyed that. I also want to thank uh, Michelle Christie, my partner in crime here, for organizing all the fabulous art that's out there. All right, so this is new to me. So we're going to do this together and see how this works. Did I mention this is really exciting? This is really exciting for me. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the fine arts things, starting with dance. Did you know 
Our secondary schools have held 13 major dance performances, including performing at the District Veterans Day event. Our dance programs have participated in more than 10 dance competitions so far this year. We currently have at least five students attending college on dance scholarships. Education and the art and dance engages the artistic process of creating, performing, and critical analysis. Music. Did you know? So far this year, we have had 1,207, well, let's make that 208, well, it will be 209, music <laughs> performances, and our students have earned 538 individual superior ratings, 209 individual excellent ratings, and this just keeps going, because we're now we're in evaluation season, so this will go up exponentially. Longleaf Elementary is the only elementary school in the state of Florida to earn the distinction of being an arts model school in all three categories, art, music, and theater. We have currently 18 students that are receiving music scholarships and several still waiting to hear. Almost every student that is receiving an arts scholarship is also on an academic scholarship. So just something to keep in mind. There is a connection. Music, did you know? We had nearly 500 students participate in the district-sponsored all-county music events. These include all-county band, all-county chorus, all-county elementary, which just happened this past weekend, and all-county jazz, which will be coming up in another month or so at the Chasco event. Wiregrass Ranch High School is the first Pasco High School to have students selected to the all-state band in chorus, band, and orchestra for all three events. J.W. Mitchell Band received state recognition in the Crowshaw Award four years in a row. You might ask, what is that? The award is given when a band <coughs> earns superior ratings, which is the highest rating, in both marching and concert at the district and the state level. They've done it four years in a row. Wiregrass Ranch High School earned first place at the state FMBC marching band competition. That means they were the best in the state, and they're right here from Pasco County. So while we're speaking of Wiregrass, I got to need to do this, don't I? So let me go ahead and do that. Let me get, get me caught up. Yes. Did, I, did I mention this is really exciting? <laughs> I just thought I'd let you know that. So here we go. So while we're talking about music, thank you, Mr. Browning. Um, I have some guest performers for you. These are some wonderful students um, from Wiregrass High School, and they just finished their choral competition evaluation this weekend, which they earned straight superiors. And, and I asked them to think about just sing a little segment of what they did this past weekend.
Excellent. While we're here. That's right. Whenever I have one of those depressing days, that always brings me back. So the music, the fine arts, it's just, it's, it's music, it's just to the soul. So thank you. Thank you all. Theater. I hit the button. Theater. Did you know, so far, we've had over 77 theater performances, and students earned 139 individual superior ratings, 96 individual excellent ratings, and 11 critics awards. Eight high schools currently offer theater, drama, or musical theater courses, and eight middle schools currently offer theater, drama, or, or in, in uh, musical theater courses. Three students are currently attending college on a theater scholarship. Did you know River Ridge had one act and full-length plays chosen to represent our district at the State Thespian Festival two years in a row? Gulf Middle School has the <coughs> largest theater program in the county. Their students consistently Their students consistently earn higher ratings than most schools in the state of Florida. All the students at Rushi and Wesley Chapel High School earn superior or excellent at the Thespian Festival. We are experiencing growth in all our theater programs, including Pineview, Sun Lake, Wiregrass, Land O'Lakes. Waitman, Zephyr Hills, Gulf High School, and Pasco High School added theater courses to their course offerings this year. Visual art, did you know? So far this year, students participated in 75 art shows, 139 art displays, 25 competitions. Students earned 79 art awards to date. 15 students are currently attending college on an art scholarship and several still waiting to hear. We currently have artwork displayed in our state capital and in our nation's capital. We have artwork displayed at the prestigious Art Basel Show. Our performing arts centers. Did you know, together, our performing arts centers were booked 397 days last year, and many of those were filled with two or more bookings in a day. We add both centers together, that's what we have. This is impressive if you think of the fact that the time that we are off during the school year, at including weekends, is almost six weeks. Plus we have two, two and a half months off in the summer, and nobody wants to do anything on Sunday. So when you add all that together, this is really quite impressive. The center's first priority is to serve our schools and our district events. The centers provide educational programming and host field trips. The centers serve our community with a variety of programming. Our centers can be rented by the community for special events. The centers are the Pasco home to the Florida Orchestra that we brought in uh, so that the students can enjoy that. The centers host dance competitions, theater, and music competitions. And the centers produce summer theater camps for Pasco students and the students of our neighboring counties. I opened my statement or my presentation today with, did you know? Well, now you know. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Viking. That was excellent. Thanks for bringing the live performances. Okay, we're going to move the closed appeal hearing to after the action item 15.4. So we're moving on to the consent agenda. Is there any? Are there any items that a board member would like removed? Uh, yes, I just need one pulled for uh, grammatical correction, and that is 9.5. Just a gram grammatical correction. Okay, thank you. So we need a motion to approve the consent agenda with all addendum excluding 9.5. And, and adding 10.1, so move. Yeah. Second. Madam Chair, I think it's unfair that we're being I forced to come back to speak I need this it. item. All in favor? All in favor? It's out of order, right I'm sorry. Sir, we're out of order. All in order? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the motion carries. We are on item 9.5, Ms. Armstrong. All right, and I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Alfonso for the correction. Thank you, Ms. Armstrong, Madam Chair, board members. Uh, uh, actually, the keen eye 
of Ms. Armstrong identified at least a typographical error that was in the last page of the, uh, the published agenda item on this matter. And uh, what's happened actually is that item has been now subsequently corrected. Um, the last paragraph had provided, let me get the actual language because we couldn't get it up on board docs. But um, what page? Board docs is but, but board docs is working now. Oh, okay. So it is subsection two, paragraph C. It is the one, two, three, four, six line in. It says, it begins by saying the school um, will adopt the sponsor's student progression plan, and that sentence will just end right there. The allowing part, the remainder of that sentence will be stricken. So that will be the actual hard copy that will be submitted for the board's, the chair's signature today. Okay. Uh, there was a dangling phrase that didn't resolve, and uh, so we, we resolved it that way. Okay. okay. I make a motion to approve uh, 9.5. So moved. I yeah. mean, second. <laughs> so my motion by Armstrong, second by Crumley. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Now, miscellaneous action items. I need a motion to approve 15.1, which is the. We did the instructional material. We did that one. No. Is there something you. No, keep going. Okay. Uh, motion to approve item 15.1, the adoption of instructional materials for elementary art, 2D art, and Spanish. Okay, now so. I'll say it. So moved. <laughs> second. Motion by Crumley, second by Armstrong. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. We have a proclamation of fine arts month. Is Mr. Mr. Viking Lee? Yes. Oh, no. He's back there. Oh, he's still he's here. Still. Okay, we have to read it into the record then. Does somebody? I can read it. Okay. <laughs> Um, a proclamation recognizing um, March 2020 as Fine Arts Education Month. Whereas Pasco County Schools recognizes the arts defined as dance, music, theater, and visual arts for separate and distinct disciplines, each with its own body of knowledge and skills as an important element of complete and balanced education. And whereas imagination and creativity are increasingly understood as critical capacities needed for success in the 21st century workforce, and all students participating in arts education courses benefit from the skills and processes developed through the arts and apply those skills in a variety of disciplines and settings, no matter their intended career path. And whereas learning in and through the arts enables students to develop critical thinking and creative problem solving skills, imagination and creativity, alternative ways to communicate and express feelings and ideas, and cross-cultural understanding, which support academic success across the curriculum as well as professional growth outside the classroom. And whereas, arts education innovatively ignites and engages learners personally and enhances the social and emotional morale, as well as the quality of students in all school cultures by helping develop self-confidence, boost self-reliance, and increase empathy and compassion towards <coughs> oneself and others. And whereas, arts education is essential for all students in Pasco County Schools as a part of a well-rounded education. Now therefore be proclaimed by the District School Board of Pasco County that March 2020 be observed as Fine Arts Education Month in Pasco County Schools and urges all citizens to join this special observant. I need a motion to approve. So moved. Second. 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 <laughs> oh, okay. A motion by, I don't think we had, a uh, motion by Harding, second by, I think it was Armstrong. It was. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I need, does anyone want to read in the I'll autism? Do you have it? I have it right here. Okay. Okay, proclamation, par pardon me, proclamation recognizing April 2020 as National Autism Awareness Month, whereas each year people across the globe take time to recognize the millions of people living with autism spectrum disorder, and whereas autism spectrum disorder is a pervasive developmental disorder affecting the social, <coughs> communication, and behavioral skills of those affected by it, and whereas one in 59 American children are diagnosed on the autism spectrum, and whereas in Pasco County Schools, we provide services for more than 1,000 students on the autism spectrum, and whereas students are provided educational services in a variety of settings from general education classes to separate ESC classes, and whereas this number has increased over time as identification methods have improved, and whereas Pasco County Schools continues awareness efforts in order to educate <coughs> professional students and community members about autism and best practices <coughs> in educating individuals with autism. The, uh, 
therefore be it proclaimed that the District School Board of Pasco County does hereby, hereby, hereby join the nation in recognizing April as National Autism Awareness Month as a symbol of our commitment to creating a culture of disability awareness and inclusion for all members of our school community. Thank you. I need a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Motion by Altman, second by Harding. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I need a motion to take an off agenda item 15.4, so which moved. is the aviation. Second. Motion, Altman, second, Armstrong. All in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Chair, I will uh, move approval of 15.4 out of state travel for aviation teacher. Need a second? Second. Motion by Altman, second by Crumley. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Now we're going to move to the expulsion hearing. Yes, ma uh, Madam Chair, board members, what we'll do at this time, if uh, we'll have to have this as a closed appeal hearing, which is what it is, we will then, after the hearing, have to come back onto the record to announce the board's disposition, and the board can resume with the agenda uh, to cover board member comments and any other closing remarks by staff. We'll also have public comment at that time on non-agenda items. So at this point, Madam Chair, I'd ask that if we could take just a minute or two to clear the boardroom so that we can uh, prepare for the appeal hearing. And I'd like to take a minute or two just to walk outside and uh, discuss okay. the rules with the parent. All right, thank you. Spacemeyer, are we ready? Okay, uh, let the record reflect that after a hearing, the board accepted the recommendation for the expulsion by recommendation by Superintendent Browning. And if I may, it was a unanimous vote by the board. Okay, thank you. And we are on individual board member reports, Mrs. Harding. So, in honor of Fine Arts and Education Month, I had an opportunity to attend a couple of fine art things. Um, I got to go to Cruz Lake Middle School to listen to their band because I wasn't able to attend their concert. So Mr. Ronan was like, why don't you just come to the band room and we'll perform it for you. So it was really awesome. They're just so amazing. I also had the opportunity to go watch Day Spring Academy's secondary play of Peter Pan. I laughed so hard and I really enjoyed that entire performance. I also got to attend the Black Tie concert for Mitchell High School last week. Um, I'm continuously blown away um, at our students' talent, and I want to thank their band director, Joel Kina, for fostering the love of music into their um, students, and also for Mr. Vikeek for being there, because I think they were practicing for their evaluation, so they had some judges back there to give them feedback, and Mr. Viking was one of them, so it was really awesome. I also had the opportunity to attend Northwest Elementary's Buddy, Met Buddy Bench Ceremony. I, had never, I have never gone to a Buddy Bench Ceremony, and I just want to I just love, 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 love the buddy, the buddy bench. Um, and I'm not sure if you guys know what the buddy bench does, but there are, there's like a kindness squad that's um, in charge of, actually they're called kindness ambassadors, in every classroom um, at Northwest, and they're in charge of watching the bench at recess. So when students need a friend to play with them, they go and sit on this bench, and the kindness ambassadors will come up to them and ask them to play. So I thought that was such a fabulous way to build friendships and a kindness culture. And um, right now I was told that we have 17 benches in our elementary schools all over our, our county. So I wanted to thank, thank for that. And um, this kind of piggybacks off what Dr. Skanga said. I actually had the opportunity to um, help launch the new reading unit in second grade at Bexley Elementary School. Um, they're reading the book Seed by Seed, and the story is all about the life of Johnny Appleseed. And throughout this story, there's different central messages. Um, to get students excited, the teacher set up a courtroom complete with a judge and a bailiff, and I got to be the bailiff. It's pretty cool. Um, the council, who were the teachers, each dressed up as one of those central messages and had to explain why it was more important than the others. And then the jury, who were the students, utilized the rubric, which will be one of the one that they're going to be assessed with on a Nearpod, to rate them. And at the very end, the jury voted whose central message was most important. I really want to commend the Bexley teachers. Um, they did a fabulous job at engaging students, utilizing the Nearpod and fun costumes, and I was really blown away and excited that they invited me to join this launch. Um, yesterday morning, I also got to spend um, some time at Cypress Elementary School. I really want to thank Ms. Berryhill and her assistant principal, Ms. Tanello, for everything they're doing at their school. The, from the moment I walked in, Ms. Berry Hill just spoke so highly of her teachers and staff, and that just really warmed my heart. There's so much fun learning there. I even got to go into a fifth grade class and go on a virtual reality of a black hole with virtual reality glasses. It was really fun. 
I also got to visit their SPP unit, and I did want to point out, and I did talk to Dr. Skinga, and I have talked to Mr. Um, Browning, um, <clears throat> that they do need support there. Those students have had multiple teachers this year, and their teachers are getting hurt. Um, and I just witnessed that yesterday. So I look forward to hearing how we're going to support this unit um, and all the units around our district um, and, and the learning that is supposed to be happening there. So thank you. Thank you. Ms. Crumbly. Yep, thank you. Um, I'm in honor also of the Fine Arts and Education Month. I'm going to only highlight two things because they invited me to represent the district at Ruth Eckerd Hall at 1130. It's going to be a real haul to get down there. But anyway, it's a very interesting. It's called Smart Session, and they're going to show initiatives of how Ruth Eckerd Hall wants to um, perhaps partner with our district, so I want to get to that. Anyway, attended the Special Olympics on the west side. That is always fantastic, and I don't know what the count of the kids was, but it just grows every year, and um, always a fantastic day. I'm sure those of you that went on the uh, east side felt the same way. Um, my highlight, I'd like to give a shout out to, and a thank you rather, to uh, with the Coochie River Electric uh, Cooperative, in addition to the millions of dollars they have already given to our students over the years, as of last week, they committed a significant uh, amount of dollars and resources to support the new world drumming curriculum coming to uh, Lacucci Elementary School. And they will be purchasing all the instruments as well as paying for an instructor. And funds will be recurring, although it is going to be considered a pilot program. The kids will be thinking of a name so that we can brand the program. And the idea is that it will expand into other curriculum choices for the students, such as maybe coding, drones. These are just things that have been um, thrown out there. And Tom Viking has left, but I wanted to thank him for uh, the work he's done here and uh, getting all the estimates on the instruments and so forth. Um, also, and this is going to probably start trickling into place uh, this year. And also to Kim Po for her help. And uh, it's very exciting. Also, the, a piece of good news up there, the fifth graders at Lacucci Elementary, this is the first time that 40% of them are going to be entering middle school in advanced math. First time that's ever happened. And, and their enrollment is actually increasing a little bit, but it is increasing. <coughs> and Latoya, La the principal, uh, told me that about a child every week or two is enrolling into the school. So I just thought I'd give you all that shout out. <coughs> so, thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, my husband's favorite event, uh, sponsored by the uh, Pasco Education Foundation and CTE, was the Culinary Dessert Contest that was held at Land of Lakes. Uh, delicious, delicious entries. They all were amazing, but the winner was Lemon Surprise by Land of Lakes High School, so anybody attending the um, Cinderella Ball will be uh, able to participate in that dessert, which will be cooked and served by the students of Land of Lakes High School. Uh, the other thing I really want to stress is uh, pay attention to Wayne Birch's uh, legislative updates. We're winding down on this session. There's, uh, you know, of course the budget's always a concern and there's some bills outside of education that's going to affect our budget such as FRS uh, contributions. Uh, so hopefully we don't have another year of, yes, they gave us this, but over here, they took away X amount more. So uh, we're going to have to watch that very closely. So, Ms. Grumley, I asked about at the Special Olympics on the east side the other day about the number. And uh, there were over 750 on the west side and over 540 on the east side. So somewhere around 1,300 kids that uh, participated. So it was uh, great. It was cold yeah we had yeah the, it was really cool we, we had the better better we weather there that cold yeah. front came in so, overnight i thought so, i felt bad for you but side. anyway they were there and they were active and so i attended that and then also uh the dinner the other night that the education mm -hmm. foundation does to honor our uh, our employees teachers and stuff uh which is a great event and i appreciate the foundation and uh what they do to help us recognize our employees every year 
Thank you. Um, so some people already said what I was going to say, but uh, thank you again, Ms. Hexler-Nettles and the leadership, PASCO, uh, for giving me the opportunity to speak, but more importantly for all the time that staff and our community members uh, put into spending a day, a day and learning about education. They were all very impressed with Sanders Memorial <coughs> STEAM School. Um, I also attended Special Olympics and just wanted to take a minute to recognize, I believe that was Val Linden's last event, and she's done a terrific job for our district and she will be missed. So thank you to her. Um, I too attended the dinner to honor our teacher, SRP, and MB principal, assistant principal, and district administrator of the year. I wanted to congratulate and thank all the winners for all they do for our students and for the rest of our staff. But since Mrs. Glenn was is here today and she was not able to make the dinner, I thought maybe we could recognize her and give her a round of applause. So thank you. She is our principal of the year. Thank you. Um, I also had the opportunity to sit in with an honors history of the Holocaust class at Land Lakes High School last week. Uh, the teacher, Ms. Hanoff, had invited Mr. Harry Human to come speak about his parents who were survivors of the Holocaust and he shared their stories with the students and how he emigrated to the United States with them as a small child. It was a great opportunity for our students to have these firsthand experiences. Um, and I did attend uh, the Black History Month gallery walk and living museum that Ms. Poe talked about. The fifth graders did a great job. It was like a wax museum and they had these little buttons in front of them. When the students stepped on the buttons, they when other students stepped on the buttons, they came alive and they had all their speeches memorized and they did a phenomenal job. Uh, each grade level also contributed to the gallery walk of highly influential African Americans throughout various parts of our history in this country. They made sure to include people that are not famous and are often overlooked. Um, one group even concentrated on influential people of color who were born in Florida. So with this event, Veterans Elementary was able to emphasize embracing diversity, which is part of their mission and vision. So it was a great experience and an amazing event to be able to see. And lastly, Dr. Moore's not here, so I'll have to follow up with her later, because we had talked about this. I stopped by Jabba Palooza, Pasco, on Saturday. They had a wonderful event for any student in Pasco County who has an IEP. It was sponsored by ARC Nature Coast, ARC of Florida, and Vocational Rehabilitation, which is funded by the Department of Education. Um, the students did a short career interest survey and then got to work with community business partners for on-the-job experiences. They chose which jobs they wanted to try and then the employers rated the students on their skills and provided contact information if they're interested in a job. The students also had the opportunity to practice interview skills and get rated on their greeting, their dress, their demeanor, their eye contact, their handshake. Um, it would be great if we could offer a career experience like this for all of our students. I know we're doing financial literacy nights, but I'd love it if we could maybe look into doing something like that for other students as well. And I'll follow up with Dr. Moore. Okay, is there any other Ma new business? Madam Chairman, there? just if I may, just follow up on one point that Mrs. Uh, Armstrong had raised. I just want the board to be aware that the legislature has passed um, and enrolled uh, or engrossed the Florida Retirement System Bill. Mm -hmm. So it's passed. It's They're just holding it until the end of the session to see if they can work this thing out is my guess. But uh, both the House and the, the Senate have come together and they both passed that bill out. So it's out there. And it's estimated that it's going to cost us about $75 per student mm -hmm. for actuarial costs uh, for the Florida Retirement System. Keep in mind that that comes out of the BSA. BSA is either 40 or $50, respectively, depending on where they settle in, in conference. Uh, but one chamber has it at 40, the other chamber has it at 50. So even if you take the best BSA, which is $50, you're $25 uh, in, the, in the red. Uh, we are monitoring it. Uh, we continue to hold out hope that uh, some changes are going to be made to our retirement uh, so that districts are not having to bear uh, this much uh, brunt at, at one time. Uh, keep in mind that we're not the only ones. School districts make up over half of the uh, amount needed of the $450 million statewide, approximately. The others are special districts, county commissions, um, um, yeah, and uh, they're the ones, state colleges, university systems, uh, they're, they're having to take the other, the other half, so it just doesn't impact uh, universities or, or K-12. K the problem we have is that we have all of our resources tied up and 
dictated to us is how we're going to spend them. Uh, so we just don't have funds of money that we can move around to pay for that. So obviously my, my fear, uh, my concern is, is that there is money in the raise in there for raises for teachers, but uh, it yet it remains to be seen what's going to be out there for uh, the rest of the staff. I don't think I'm going to say thank you to you on that. Um, <laughs> School Board Attorney, Mr. Alfonso? I have nothing to report at this time. <laughs> okay, so we are on public comment. So item 17, and I have one, two, three cards, correct? That's correct. Okay, Mr. Alfonso? Thank you, Madam Chair. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the opportunity for the public to be heard on a general topic of relevance to the operation of Pasco <laughs> County Schools. To speak at this time, you should have already completed a pink speaker's request card found at the tables at the entrance of the boardroom. If you have any documents or records that you wish to share with the board, please provide them to the board secretary prior to making your comments. Each speaker will have three minutes during this segment of the agenda. If you see a yellow light flashing on the podium, please wrap up your comments to leave time for other speakers. Speakers will be called to come forward by the board chair prior to making your remarks. Please state your name and address for the record. 